Lucy's Biggest Hits. Seven years ago this week, back in 1986, one of the biggest hits in the USA was Sledgehammer. It's by a singer and songwriter who once took a crash course in French, Spanish, and German so he could release an album in four different versions. I'll have details and that big hit after this. Casey's Top 40. I'm Mark Elliott for Casey Kasem. Now, we're up to the latest from Donny Osmond and our story of how Peter Gabriel once flew 3,458 miles just to see Donny perform. It all goes back to 1987 when former teen idol Donny Osmond went to a UNICEF benefit concert in New York City. Backstage after the show, he spotted a musician he'd always stood in awe of. Peter Gabriel, one of the founding members of Genesis, and the man who hit with songs like Sledgehammer, Shock the Monkey, and Big Time. Donnie was shy about meeting his idol, but he finally got up his courage, walked over to Peter, and told him how great he thought his music was. Donnie thought Peter would thank him politely, and that would be it. Instead, Peter Gabriel lit up like a light bulb, gave Donnie a big handshake, and told him how, back in the 70s, he had flown from London to New York just to see Donnie perform with the Osmonds at Madison Square Garden. Well, they got to talking, and Donnie confided to Peter that he wanted to get back into recording, but he'd lost his confidence and was concerned that people thought all he could make was bubblegum music. Donnie says Peter told him, quote, Forget about that. Forget about your old image. The time is right. If your music's strong enough, it'll bring you back. Peter then invited Donnie to do some recording in his personal studio. And that's where Donnie wound up doing his entire comeback album. Donnie says recording there gave him the credibility he'd been looking for. It gave him the Peter Gabriel stamp of approval that made people take him seriously. Casey's Top 40. I'm Casey Kasem. It's been over five years since Peter Gabriel hit the top ten with Sledgehammer and Big Time. What's he been up to since then? Well, he's been doing a lot. Peter Gabriel's become a major advocate for human rights around the world. He's worked for Greenpeace. He's sung at tributes to Nelson Mandela. He's been a big part of Amnesty International. And most recently, he's been the driving force behind a new organization called Witness. The group was started with the backing of the Lawyers Committee for Human Rights. And they got going with a $150,000 startup grant from the Reebok Foundation, the charitable arm of the people who make Reebok sneakers. Peter Gabriel's concept is to arm people of conscience around the world with the latest technology, video cameras, computers, and fax machines. The idea is that when there's a human rights abuse, for instance, the massacre of Chinese students in Tiananmen Square, they'll be there to record it and to show it to the world. Peter says, quote, atrocities are committed every day. We want the pictures to exist so the story exists. And that's what Peter Gabriel is up to these days, working as a sledgehammer on human rights abuse. Now, on with the countdown. Casey's Coast to Coast. Casey's Top 40. Sitting in for Casey Kasem, this is Mark Elliott. And now we're up to the latest solo hit for the original lead singer of Genesis. When he left the band, critics predicted huge stardom for him. But that stardom eluded him for a whole decade. Peter Gabriel was one of the founding members of Genesis, and from their very start back in 1967, he was the band's most visible member. He wrote the songs, and he created the theatrical style of the group, dressing himself in outlandish costumes that sometimes made him look like an elf, a flower, or a medieval monk. Peter Gabriel put on quite a show, and when he announced in 1975 that he was leaving for a solo career, the general assumption was that Genesis was finished and Peter was on his way to superstardom. But things didn't turn out that way. With Phil Collins as the band's new lead singer, it was Genesis that took off. And it was Peter Gabriel who had long years of struggle. His much-awaited debut album as a solo artist had only modest success. It produced no big hits at all. And that was pretty much the story of Peter Gabriel's career for the next ten years. During that time, he had just one top 40 hit, a song called Shock the Monkey and it never broke into the top 20. It wasn't until 1986 that Peter Gabriel finally lived up to his promise with the double platinum album called So. It was an album that gave him three big top 40 hits, In Your Eyes, Big Time, and the number one smash, Sledgehammer. Now, seven years later, Peter's current CD has also gone platinum. Here's Peter Gabriel with Steam. Casey's Biggest Hits. 
Six years ago this week, back in 1987, one of the biggest hits in the USA was Big Time. It's by a big-time rocker whose only Grammy wasn't for rock, but for the soundtrack of the Martin Scorsese movie The Last Temptation of Christ. After all the amazing things singer-songwriter Peter Gabriel has done over the years, both with Genesis and as a solo act, you'd think he'd have won a pile of Grammys. But actually, the only one he's earned was in the category of Best New Age Performance. He took home that award for creating the moody, eccentric soundtrack for the highly controversial 1989 film about the last days of Christ. And like everything Peter Gabriel does, it was unpredictable, creative, and innovative. Six years ago this week, Peter Gabriel was showing us yet another side to his talent, singing one of the biggest hits in the USA. Here's Big Time. Hi there. Casey's Biggest Hits. Seven years ago this week, back in 1986, one of the biggest hits in the USA was by a singer and songwriter who once took a crash course in French, Spanish, and German so he could release an album in four different versions. He's Peter Gabriel, and back in 1980, he decided that his music shouldn't be confined to a single language. After recording his third album, titled Peter Gabriel in English, he hired private tutors to teach him French, Spanish, and German. And he went back into the studio and re-recorded the very same album in those three languages. But as things turned out in France, Spain, and Germany, it was the English language version of the album that sold best. But still, Peter Gabriel was happy. He had made his artistic statement. Seven years ago this week, that creative singer-songwriter had one of the biggest hits in the USA from an album he only recorded in English. Here's Peter Gabriel and Sledgehammer. Casey's Top 40. I'm Casey Kasem. There's been a lot said this summer about the Lollapalooza tour and this week's big Woodstock concert. Well, now we're up to the first Top 40 hit for the band Live, a group that's part of some other big shows this summer, a tour created by Peter Gabriel to bring the music of the world to America. It's called the WOMAD Tour, which stands for World of Music, Arts, and Dance. Former Genesis lead singer Peter Gabriel came up with the idea for it way back in 1980 to use some of the pulling power of rock to introduce people to some of the music and dance and culture of other countries. The way the WOMAD Tour works is this. Half of the acts are contemporary Western groups, while the other half are less known traditional acts from the third world. Each group plays a set, and then there's a finale where Western pop and third world traditional music mix together with all sorts of new sounds emerging. This year, the lineup looks like this. From the third world come acts like Mustafa Teddy Addy and the Royal Obonu drummers from Ghana, Ashgabad from Turkmenistan, the Guo Brothers from China, Shikisha from South Africa, and a Native American act called Song Catchers. The Western acts include Peter Gabriel himself, along with Midnight Oil from Australia, Arrested Development from the U.S., and the group whose first Top 40 hit climbs three notches to number 30 this week on Casey's Top 40. Casey's Biggest Team. Nine years ago this week, back in 1986, one of the biggest hits in the USA was a song by Phil Collins with backup vocals by Peter Gabriel and Sting. He had played drums for them, so they were happy to sing for him. I'll have details and that big hit after this. Casey's Biggest Hits! Nine years ago this week, back in 1986, one of the biggest hits in the USA was a song by Phil Collins with backup vocals by Peter Gabriel and Sting. He had played drums for them, so they were happy to sing for him. Along with being a singer and songwriter, Phil Collins is one of the busiest session drummers in England. He's played drums for Eric Clapton, for Robert Plant, for Paul McCartney, for Peter Gabriel, and for Sting. And so when Phil needs a musical favor in return, there's no way his fellow musicians can say no. Which is how he wound up corralling both Peter Gabriel and Sting as backup singers on one of the biggest hits in the USA nine years ago this week. Here's Phil Collins and friends with... Take me home. American Top 20. Well, now we're up to an American Top 20 extra by Peter Gabriel, a star who says he often writes 200 songs or more to find the 10 that he puts on an album. Peter Gabriel says he's amazed that he's been able to put out as many albums as he has, because for him, the process is endless. He says, quote, For me, it's very slow. I go into the studio with 200 songs or so, and while I'm there... I'll keep writing more. It's a messy technique. 
Well, to get things under control over the years, Peter Gabriel has come up with a system. He has the people around him rate his song ideas. Quote, I ask people to score things on a scale of a hundred. My toughest critic is my wife. She once gave one of my songs a fourteen. <laughs> and she was right. She has very clear ideas about what's good and bad. Well, one of the songs that Peter's panel of experts ranked as good is a song that's an extra here on American Top 20. Here's Peter Gabriel with a smash from 1986. Come on down with Casey Kasem. 